to see everybody here um, this morning in the Mountain Time Zone, uh, tonight overseas, this afternoon or tonight, wherever you are, um, particularly for those of you who are 12 and a half hours ahead of us. I am very grateful for you joining me at, at, uh, at near midnight. Um, and so I hope that you find this a valuable time to uh, learn about the University of Colorado. Uh, you can just call me David or Dr. Kroll, whatever you are more familiar with. Uh, they gave me a lot of titles, but uh, really I'm, I'm, just, I'm just Professor Dave here. So uh, I'm here to give you uh, some information on our Master of Science program in pharmaceutical sciences. I'm gonna jump back and forth between our website, some slides, uh, and my iPad where I've uh, updated some of the curricula. Um, but uh, why don't we just go ahead and do this here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, for those of you who have questions, um, feel free to uh, unmute at any time and ask me. If you're having trouble with some of your bandwidth and you, you need to turn off the video, uh, that's fine as well. Uh, you should still be able to go ahead and um, uh, put, uh, put questions in the chat box. So, um, and then of course, uh, after we are, uh, after we're done, um, you can feel free to uh, contact me directly. For those of you who have contacted me in the meantime, I, I do apologize. You know, we've had to, um, we've had to reschedule this uh, uh, because of a, a death in my family last week. Uh, so I appreciate your patience in joining me. So if I didn't respond to your email last week, that's why. So anyway, very happy to be with you here today. Let's go ahead and just talk briefly about um, about what uh, we're going to discuss today. And um, let me go ahead and do this very well and do slideshow. Uh, so this is a, a picture of our pharmacy building uh, just outside the border of Denver, Colorado in the town of Aurora. Uh, this is the Skag School of Pharmacy. Um, there's my office right there, but I haven't been to my office since March because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we have a really nice atrium here where, uh, where students get together and, and have lunch. Um, and uh, the campus is ab absolutely beautiful. Everything is, a, is a, no older than about 20 years old. Uh, the campus used to be in the center of Denver, uh, but in the late 90s and early 2000s, moved out to a decommissioned army base, uh, 800 acres of land, uh, and essentially rebuilt the entire campus from scratch. Uh, so it's a very, very pleasant place to be. Some terrific views of our snow-capped peaks um, and, and, and the city itself uh, from this building. So uh, if, you, if you choose to do the on-campus version of our program, it's a wonderful place to be. If you choose to do the uh, online version, well, it's, we, we welcome you uh, in Denver anytime that you can come by. So these are my uh, contact, uh, best ways to contact me. Um, this is uh, my name. And uh, for those of you outside, obviously the US international code is plus one or plus 001, depending where you are. Uh, this goes to my office at the school, but I have it linked to my cell phone. So uh, you should be able to contact me uh, wherever I am, uh, whenever I am. And I do, I do answer at all, at all odd hours. If I don't, it means I'm probably eating or, or, or running or doing something fun. And, um, and then this is my email. Uh, note that the, uh, the, um, the domain is CU Anschutz. Uh, University of Colorado is known as, as CU uh, because the University of California system is known as UC. So, so uh, we were a state after California. So we got CU. And Anschutz is named after uh, Philip Anschutz, who is a philanthropist in the Denver area, uh, who has donated literally hundreds of millions of US dollars uh, to, uh, to the campus, to the medical school, to various research entities, um, mostly to build buildings, not so much to support students, but uh, we're grateful for, um, for, those, for those investments in our community. So here's just a general outline of what I want to talk about. And I, I really don't want to talk for more than a half hour because I really want you uh, to be able to ask me the questions that you have. Uh, but what I'm going to start off talking about is just the introduction uh, to our Master of Science program this past year. Uh, uh, we launched the online version of the program 
The on-campus program is actually only two years old. Uh, we have operated a uh, doctor of philosophy in pharmaceutical sciences for over 50 years. Uh, and only in the last few years have we seen that there's been a greater demand for a master's degree. Uh, employers are oftentimes looking for uh, more skills than, than a bachelor's degree in a, in a biological science. Uh, so we've sort of taken most of the coursework for our PhD and put, put it into this master's degree. I'm gonna talk in general about what are the pharmaceutical sciences and, and why we have five specialty tracks. You still, you still get a master's in pharmaceutical sciences from our program, uh, but you can specialize uh, in and, and sort of pick and choose coursework and experiences in a variety of areas where our faculty uh, really have world-class expertise you know, across the board. Talk, we'll talk briefly about what you can do with a master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences, um, and then how do I apply? I know that some of you already have uh, fi filed your applications um, and the application fee, uh, how much does the overall program cost, and, and, um, and then what questions uh, do you have? Um, the School of Pharmacy uh, has actually been in existence uh, since 1910, started off in Boulder, Colorado, which is where the main undergraduate campus is, uh, about, uh, about 26 miles or 40 kilometers to the northwest. If you scroll down on our page, um, you can see we offer a doctor pharmacy program, a variety of online programs for pharmacy professionals, and then the master's and PhD programs are predominantly uh, for people who are pursuing scientific research careers. So when you click on Master of Science, you'll go ahead and get a couple of these. We have uh, some masters for clinicians, one in clinical pharmacy, one in palliative care, and, and then masters in pharmaceutical sciences is right here. And this is one of our faculty members, Dr. Uday Kampela, uh, who is a nanotechnology uh, expert. Uh, you probably came to this site when you uh, signed up for today. And uh, just so you know, right here on the first page, to apply for our program, um, right here, click on this apply button and it'll take you to our, uh, to our application. Um, I gave you instructions down at the bottom about how to apply. Uh, you have to essentially click uh, through a menu bar that shows MS and pharmaceutical sciences. Um, the admissions requirements for you uh, are pretty straightforward. We need um, obviously the completed graduate school application. Um, we ask that you have a bachelor's degree pretty much in a wide variety of areas, uh, biology, chemistry, uh, pharmacy, um, any sort of related area. We've had people in biochemistry, geology. The, the key thing is that we, we would like for you to have some coursework in human physiology, um, chemistry up through organic chemistry, um, at least an introductory biology class, and, um, and human, human physiology, if, if, if at all possible. Uh, we also request a written personal statement. It could be on the order of about 1,000 words. And this is really a chance for you to share with the admissions committee uh, any aspects of you personally that may not be fully represented uh, by simply your application and your, uh, your, your academic transcripts. Um, we specifically ask, and I'll talk about the five tracks in a second, but we specifically ask why, why you're specifically interested in uh, the specialty track, whether it be clinical pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, uh, drug discovery, molecular and systems toxicology, or pharmaceutical biotech and drug delivery. And now, uh, just in the past year, we've introduced a specialty track in uh, cannabis uh, science and medicine. Uh, Colorado is one of the first states in the United States to have uh, medical use of cannabis and was the first state together with Washington, the state of Washington that is, uh, to have uh, general retail uh, sales of cannabis um, uh, for people uh, age 21 and older. Uh, very important is the fact that we no longer require the graduate record examination. Uh, if you've taken the GRE and uh, you want to submit your scores, that's perfectly fine. Our school code is 4875, but it's, it's not required. Um, for those of you who have received your degree uh, from institutions outside the U.S. or U.K. Uh, or Canada, um, we require a test of English as a foreign language. It does not necessarily have to be the TOEFL. 
I know some of you have written me to ask about the IELTS test, and that's perfectly acceptable. And I can um, talk to you later about the minimums uh, for those. Uh, we have a, a deadline right now of February 15th. Um, we'd like to have all the materials by then, uh, but if you're having trouble tracking down people uh, for uh, references, uh, references either by professors or, or research laboratory advisors, um, if you're having trouble getting those, if you can get them to us by the end of February, the faster we get those, the faster uh, we can make we can make a decision. So, as I mentioned, pharmaceutical sciences is a broad-based area that talks about uh, how drugs are developed, discovered, uh, developed, and brought to market. Uh, and a master's in pharmaceutical sciences uh, takes into account all aspects of pharmacology, toxicology, and drug safety, uh, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics. How the uh, drug acts in the body, and how the body acts on the drug, um, uh, how we use uh, computational modeling to identify small molecules, uh, the area of pharmaceutics, uh, how we formulate drugs to make sure they're delivered uh, to the appropriate parts of the body, uh, whether they are a small organic molecule uh, or whether they are a large biologic uh, or, or a vaccine. And uh, we have a, a big group that studies uh, uh, delivery of protein drugs and another group that studies the delivery of small organic molecules. And then we have a large program in toxicology, the science of drug and chemical safety. Um, we have actually a separate PhD program in toxicology, but the master's in pharmaceutical sciences allows you uh, to specialize in toxicology uh, at the master's level. So you'd get a master's in pharmaceutical sciences uh, with a specialty uh, emphasis in molecular and systems toxicology. You know, a lot of times people can't decide after their bachelor's degree. I know I was one of them uh, a few years ago uh, where I had trouble deciding whether I really wanted to take the time to invest in getting a PhD. And so the master's program is really a good place for people who have a bachelor's degree, want to get further training, you know, but can't quite get, you know, the five to six years that it might take uh, to pursue a PhD. I also think that anybody who has a general science background but wants to learn how drugs are discovered, developed, and brought to market uh, is, is a perfectly valid reason for getting a master's. I know a lot of people go back for liberal arts degrees uh, when they had scientific training because they just wanted to broaden you know, their basic curiosity. Um, also, if you are looking to get into medical school, uh, physician assistant school, uh, dental school, uh, nursing school, what we provide here in the Masters in Pharmaceutical Sciences gives you a really strong foundation uh, for a career in the health professions. Um, and then also, if you are interested ultimately in doing the PhD program, it used to be, and particularly the European model was such that you would do a master's degree first, and then um, if you if you uh, did well, wants to move on for your for your PhD. Uh, and we do have our own PhD programs, both in pharmaceutical sciences and in molecular toxicology. Um, but you are, uh, we, you are welcome to apply for PhD programs elsewhere. And we have one of our students, uh, Glenn Harder, who couldn't be with us here today, um, uh, who's earning his master's this semester. And he was just accepted to the PhD program in organic chemistry at the University of Southern California. So uh, he has a few other applications pending, but, but certainly the, the program can, can prepare you to, to go elsewhere. Um, if you don't know much about Colorado, the Skag School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences uh, is the only school of pharmacy in, um, in the state of Colorado, uh, and we have both a, a strong representation in the clinical sciences as well as in the basic sciences. We have about 30 faculty members who operate uh, laboratories that are funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health. Uh, the American Cancer Society, American Society of Nephrology, and so forth. Uh, so we have a very active research program, and we have generally uh, hovered around um, uh, ranking of number 10 or 11 uh, in the amount of National Institutes of Health funding that, that, that comes to the school. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, not only do we have an online or a um, not only do we have an online or a on-campus program, but we also have a a non-thesis and thesis path. For those of you 
who are who would be interested in the online uh, thing, the online uh, option that is, um, you would do a capstone project instead of uh, research and a thesis. Uh, generally, uh, studying the re the literature in a specific therapeutic area and producing a paper at the end that um, that is a quality that could be uh, submitted as a review article to a to a specific scientific society journal. For those of you who have research interests, um, if you could, uh, depends on the funding of the laboratories and the number of people in the laboratories, but there is an opportunity uh, to do thesis research. Um, and this involves about a year of, of research during your second year that you're also taking coursework and the conduct of original research that makes an original contribution to the literature uh, and, and, the, um, and the writing of, of a formal uh, uh, research thesis volume. So I wanted to go ahead and break apart the individual, um, let me go back here. Let me go ahead and break apart the individual um, tracks of the program. And I'm gonna have to go back to, since I can't use my iPad, I am gonna go to Acrobat and open up the curricula. So these curricula have not yet been updated on the website, uh, but they will be in the next day or two. Let me go ahead and open this up. But what you have here is, um, I'll just give you an overall view of how we do all this color coding for, um, for those of you who are interested in the specific um, tracks of the program. So as I mentioned, we have five tracks. Uh, clinical pharmacokinetics uh, comes first. And as you'll see, we have uh, the coursework split up between two years, between fall and spring. Uh, and there is a, there is a, a, legend to this color madness in that we have uh, blue represents a required core curriculum course. Red are required courses within that specific track. So in this, in this instance, the red courses here are for uh, specifically the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics track. And then the green courses are electives. And depending on the track that you choose, uh, you'll have a minimum number of electives that are required uh, although you can, um, you can take as many elective courses uh, as you would like. The bottom line is that a Master of Science degree at the University of Colorado requires a minimum of 30 credit hours. And we've tried to space it out so that no one semester is really particularly difficult. Okay, so for all of you who would be coming here to the master's program, you would take all of the blue courses regardless of what track you were in. We have a year long course called Fundamentals of Pharmaceutical Sciences, three credits each, each semester. And what it's really designed to do is bring everybody up to the same speed. There's a lot of introduction of physiology, a lot of introduction of organic uh, chemistry and physical chemistry, uh, disease processes, uh, how drugs are delivered, how drugs are formulated. Uh, and essentially everybody uh, will do well in some parts of the class and everybody will have a little bit of a struggle in other parts of the class. And they'll be different for each of you, depending upon your level of preparation coming in here. Uh, I would say that if people ask me for advice about if they should take any specific classes before they come to our program, and I would say to really just make sure that you have a recent understanding of biochemistry and human physiology and pathophysiology. You can learn what you need in this class, but, but having a recent biochemistry and physiology, pathophysiology class will really ensure your success. Um, all of our uh, research programs require that you have training in the ethical conduct of research. And so we offer a one credit class uh, for everybody that's called Ethical Issues in Toxicology and Pharmaceutical Sciences. And then a statistics class, uh, really one of the best statistics classes I've seen, and I wish I had Dr. Saba, Dr. Laura Saba, who teaches this class, because I, I, I would have learned statistics really well had I had her in the first place. And we really have some outstanding faculty who are not just great researchers, but they're great teachers as well. Okay, so those blue classes are the absolute requirements. And then in the pharmacokinetics track, for example, you'll take a pharmacokinetics class. Uh, there are, it's a series of three graduate classes, basic pharmacokinetics, uh, principles and application, and then down here, population pharmacokinetics. 
And then each of the tracks will have a specific seminar class, kind of like a journal club where you where you discuss recent papers in the scientific literature. Uh, a student takes a paper each week to lead the discussion. Uh, and you'll have seminar in pharmacokinetics. In this, in this space, we have a separate seminar in cannabis, science and medicine, separate, separate one in drug discovery, separate one in, in um, uh, biotechnology and drug delivery and, and so forth. And then there are some other classes like drug development, a large class that is uh, required in several of our, several of our core, uh, several of our specialties. As you see here, there are a variety of su suggested electives in your second year. And again, what will happen is I will be your academic advisor for the first year. And then at the end of the first year, you'll pick a, a, a mentor either for laboratory or literature research uh, who will be your primary advisor. And between myself and that particular person and a third faculty member who you'll also select, will help you decide which of these elective classes are best for you. Um, whether it be pharmacogenomics, if you're interested in more toxicology type things, epidemiology, if you're interested in nanotech, uh, kind of how these uh, new COVID vaccines that have mRNA inside of them uh, are being uh, developed and delivered. Well, we have class, we have coursework in those areas. And then finally, as I mentioned, uh, we have a capstone requirement, which is a literature review or a laboratory-based literature review um, that comprises the final three credits. For those of you who have more research interests, you can do research over the entirety of your second year, uh, and that meets the capstone requirement. So that's just that's that's just the basic uh, design of, for example, the pharmacokinetics curriculum. If we were to go look elsewhere, here's the drug discovery curriculum. Again, the same three, four basic core classes, specific seminar classes. In drug discovery, you'll take a, a pharmacology class called Modern Drug Design and Actions. Uh, you'll also take the medicinal chemistry class and physical pharmacy. Uh, we have several centers on our campus uh, and core facilities for the rest of the campus to use. Uh, we have a computational drug design core facility um, that is run by a former scientist from the uh, AstraZeneca pharmaceutical company. Uh, a fellow from Great Britain, uh, Dr. Phil Regan. He teaches a course in computational design in drug discovery. And again, uh, the series of electives. For the uh, molecular and systems toxicology track, you'll note that most of the courses have a TXCL prefix, but they're the same core classes in blue. Uh, and then the TXCL classes that are taken also by our PhD students in toxicology are required of uh, master's students in the molecular and systems toxicology track. Uh, we have a specific class uh, in careers in toxicology. Uh, we, we have students develop their own um, professional career plan um, as they progress through the program. Uh, and then some of the class, some of the required classes are overlapping the development of drugs and biologics, for example, required in the toxicology curriculum, drug discovery, uh, as well as clinical pharmacokinetics. And again, the capstone and thesis requirements are, are similar. Uh, finally, or next to finally, is the pharmaceutical biotechnology and drug delivery track. Uh, and here we have, again, the same core classes. And then we get more into, because we're talking about biotechnology and uh, peptide drugs uh, or, or you know, larger molecules like uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, we have a series of required classes on protein formulation the nanotech and drug delivery, how you quantify what those proteins look like in solution. So we have a molecular interactions or biophysics and spectroscopy class. Uh, and then there uh, are other classes that are required, uh, sort of suggested electives in using um, uh, NMR or using mass spec to, to look at molecules. And then finally, for those of you who are joining us who are interested in our new track in cannabis science and medicine, it is a track of the master's in pharmaceutical sciences that uses a lot of the same core coursework, cannabis being a plant medicine. I'm a, I'm a professor of natural products pharmacology, uh, and I spent most of my career looking at plants and bacteria uh, and fungi uh, as a source for anti-cancer drugs. Um, so no surprise that other plants contain medicinal compounds like, uh, like the opium poppy, which 
gave rise to morphine and codeine. And now cannabis, which is increasingly recognized as a legitimate medicine uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, so I actually teach uh, the required uh, track specific first class in the cannabis science and medicine track. It's cannabis pharmacology and endocannabinoid physiology. We discuss the active constituents of cannabis as well as pharmaceutical products that have been made from cannabis. Uh, there's a little more of a clinical slant, a little more of an applied slant in this particular track uh, where we will have people from our Department of Clinical Pharmacy talking about cannabis therapeutics. There's one course being taught right now, actually uh, started last uh, Wednesday, on um, cannabis therapeutics, specifically in pain, in supportive care, in cancer patients, and uh, sort of clinical toxicology, uh, cannabis in um, in at-risk populations. We then have the uh, director of our mass spectrometry core facility, Dr. Nicole Reisdorf, uh, running a dual uh, uh, didactic and laboratory class on the chemical analysis of cannabis. Um, it's a little bit dicey in the United States because cannabis, although it can be approved uh, by state uh, uh, legal authorities, it is still um, not a legal substance under federal law. So in this particular case where we're analyzing cannabis, it would be, um, it would be the industrial hemp uh, that is a form of cannabis uh, that has um, less than 0.3% of the major psychoactive substance, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol. Uh, uh, and uh, so there's both a lab class and a regular class. And then I teach also a scientific writing class in uh, cannabis science and medicine. In the second year, you would get more of the cannabis therapeutics, uh, specifically in the areas of neurology and mental health. Many of you may be familiar with the fact that cannabidiol, the non-psychoactive substance in, uh, in cannabis, has been approved worldwide as a drug for rare uh, pediatric um, epilepsy syndromes. Um, and for um, and then the THC containing products have been approved for um, uh, the spasticity, muscle spasticity of multiple sclerosis. So again, we we talk about both of the use of cannabis, the plant, and products made from cannabis, the plant. Um, and then there's a set of uh, seminar classes in cannabis science and medicine, and then a legal and regulatory affairs class, which discusses the disparity, at least in the United States, between um, how states and how the nation uh, regulates cannabis as a medicine. And again, a little more expanded elective courses because some people are coming in from a clinical uh, background where they're interested in cannabis and mental health, PTSD and so forth. So they may wanna take a course in designing clinical studies or, or the regulatory environment of, of product innovation and so forth. As I said, uh, September, September, February 15th is the deadline um, for, for filing your application. As I said, letters of recommendation can come in after that. The sooner we get them all, um, the faster we can review your your application um, and get you get you a decision. Um, but I I really appreciate uh, all of your interest uh, in our school uh, and in our program. You know I can I can at least say if you're looking at other programs as well. Um, you know there's some great great pharmaceutical sciences programs out here. Uh, I was a I was a member of this faculty in the 1990s. In fact moved to North Carolina for 18 years and then just came back two years ago to, to head up this program. And I came back because the faculty are outstanding. Um, they're really terrific world-class scientists who also turn out to be outstanding human beings uh, and really give a great graduate school experience. I'd also be remiss not to mention that people like Justin uh, who are in our marketing and communications office and, and uh, his director, uh, Lori Westerman. You know, we really all work together to help promote you and try and enhance your probability of success. If you, if you look at our marketing communications website and our, and our School of Pharmacy newsletter, uh, you'll, you'll quite often see stories on our own students and where they are now uh, and we take great pride in not just having you here, but also in making you succeed because, you know, really your success is our success. And so we have a vested interest in you. 
and um, and I'll do what I can to uh, to make your experience here a really good one personally and professionally. Perfect. Well, Dr. Kroll, thank you so much for uh, making time in your schedule to join us. And thanks again to all of our attendees and participants. Um, again, look for follow-up information. Um, please let us know if you have questions. And we uh, sincerely look forward to, uh, to working with you. Great. Well, good afternoon to most of you and good evening to many of you. And thank you for staying up so late uh, to talk with me. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. My best to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.